22-year-old found murdered in a vacant lot. Her nude body posed and bisected at the waist. That had to have been a skilled surgeon. The Black Dahlia... Re Not only does it look like he's the killer of Elizabeth Short, but I discovered that he's a serial killer. There were other murders, too. Three weeks after the murder of Elizabeth Short, there was another murder, and it's Jean French. Her body was nude, posed on a vacant lot about five miles west of the Dahlia crime scene. She was blunt force trauma to the head, just like the Dahlia was. And the killer took a lipstick and wrote an obscenity, you and signed a BD for Black Dahlia. Elizabeth Short, nicknamed Black Dahlia, she was born on July 29, 1924 in Boston, Massachusetts, the third of five daughters, born to Cleo and Phoebe Mae Sawyer Short. By her teens, she had set her sights on becoming an actress. By the mid-1940s, Short was living in Los Angeles, California, working as a waitress to support herself while dreaming of catching her big break into Hollywood's acting scene. However, it would never come. In January of 1947, a horrific tragedy occurred at the age of 22. Elizabeth Short was brutally murdered in Los Angeles, her body cut in half and severely mutilated. Her body was found nude and posed by a local female resident on January 15, 1947 in a vacant lot near Limer Park on the 3800th block of LA South Norton Avenue. The sole witness of the murder had reported seeing a black sedan parked in the area in the early morning hours. Next thing I find out is the Black Dahlia killer is sending taunting notes to the police and the press. This one note, full non-disguised handwriting. It's my father's handwriting. The handwriting, then the description of the suspect that was actually seen at the crime scene. A witness was a half block away and he saw this 1936 dark sedan. Well, Dad at that time was driving a 1936 black Packard sedan. There's a lot of evidence in this case that kind of subjects him to the crime. One of the suspects, George Hodold, his son, Steve, is a former LAPD detective. He is convinced that his father had committed the crime. They do call it a theory, which is really kind of sad at this point because there are s there's so much evidence. And The Guardian, like, is one of the reports that stated that was a theory. And, and then, like, till this day, it hasn't been solved. And, um, of course, the suspect has passed away. And so his son is calling out his father, which is uh, shocking. She was last seen alive by Robert Manley on the 15th of January, 1947. Anonymous package containing Short's belongings was mailed to the Examiner newspaper on tw the 25th of January, 1947. Yes, Esiko went to uh, mail whatever belongings she had in her purse and actually was taunting the police, sending letters in. One of these serial killers that really love to kind of show off their skill, right? And they will do anything to uh, taunt and make everybody upset and it's just sickening how they think it this way, but, you know, there are some crazy people out there. On the 25th of January, 1947, Elizabeth Short's handbag and one of her shoes were found in the dumpster. Steve Holder, his son, actually went to check out the files from Elizabeth Short's case. There's a quote from George talking on the phone with someone telling them, Realized there was nothing I could do. Put a pillow over her head and cover her with a blanket. Get a taxi. They thought there was something fishy. Anyway, now they may have figured it out. Killed her. Steve's father. That was Steve's father on the phone. And they did get a lot of his conversation through his walls in his home. So they tried to get a, as much evidence as they could. The police wasn't... They were all out and very smart with this case. Let me add to that. See, he's a doctor. So he's very very intelligent and he has done numerous amount of surgeries which is why police are sort of pinpointing it out that he was the killer and they did catch another quote saying that when he was on the phone he says supposing i did kill black dahlia they couldn't prove it now they can't talk to my secretary anymore because she's dead and that blew shivers down my spine because I couldn't get enough evidence that he did kill her secretary but his son does believe that 
he also killed the secretary. My dad was also investigated 18 months before the Dahlia murder for the suspected overdose murder of his secretary. There were other murders too. He was pure evil. So this case really, really bothered me. I couldn't even cover it. Like, I'll be completely honest with you guys. I couldn't cover it at night. I was like, two nights in a row. I'm like, should I cover it? And I'm like, no, I can't. Like, I can't. It just stresses me out. But it's very sad. This case should have been solved years ago because of all the compelling evidence against Steve's father, George. So I, I personally don't want to discuss the theories in this case because, you know, where is the theory going to take you? So I'd rather just be um, state whatever everything was said. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, it's 15 minutes right now, but... I probably edit it down to like 10 or 8 minutes. We'll see. But I'm trying to get it out of very sped as much detail as as much as possible, but in a very low in a very like small video. Like I don't like to make my videos long. I like to keep it short and consistent and edited and I work on it for hours. So, and I will be posting very soon. And if you have any requests, let me know. I do cover true crime. I also post on shorts every single day. And if you want to check out my contact, here's my channel. And click subscribe. I appreciate you guys. I will see you guys very soon. Bye now.